I just want to start off with acknowledging and bringing in my father's spirit. I'm always calling in on him before I do a poetry session. He is my divine spiritual ascended master. When my father passed away in 2012 into a world of fractals and fragments, he left me with lots of starry-eyed men. Um, they tended to be actors and musicians, physics and philosophy students, digital marketing managers that all seem to have bad breakups with gravity and love to take long existential showers. I like to call them the Stardust Boys. And I felt like there, were, there was a concentration of them in inner Melbourne, particularly. And um, this poem that I'm going to share with you is a little provocation to them and to my younger self. So I call it, I want to be with you so badly, but you seem to want oblivion. A bottle of Frangelico teeters around her telephone as she waits for that call after his shift at Club X. She's an op shop car for his 4 a.m. playpen, dressed in cow print pajamas and baby Kahlua eyes. He's balding in a burgundy jacket. He's a six foot something stumbling cigarette spewing Carl Young and Carl Sagan vignettes at me as a defense mechanism against my own spirituality. He drops acid and atheism on me but he's got that throat chakra symbol on his bedroom wall and he really, really likes Rumi. He's a secret that won't stop rolling and won't start listening. I'm dressed in Y's and he's dressed in what's and our mouths are too tired to find more consonants so we just kept... <sighs> I punch and press symbols on his pierced pecs to find his function because something's just not quite adding up in this equation. I just kept losing. I kept losing to the stardust boys, to the boys in love with looking up, to the boys in love with shattering themselves and calling it beautiful. And I wanted to appreciate them at more than just a subatomic level, but they kept getting off to the thought of being a speck of an ever-expanding universe. And well, to them, I was just today's glitter but he really likes Rumi. I've developed some sort of cosmic girl peer planetary pressure, and I think it's mostly derived from spiritual Instagram sectors. Stardust boys, I'm sorry that I don't share photos of my cervix encoded in sacred geometry, that when I spread my legs apart, there's no downpour of a galaxy that my ego doesn't want to undress for you, that your ego can't seem to undress for me. And I'm still confused between the concept of connection and unity, but you really like Rumi. I vow to the stars of Sirius. I promise to be as silent as an astral mutter. No more earthly clutter from me as I dissolve into Bill Hicks's famous slow wave of vibration. I'll be just a drop in your ocean, or was it the entire ocean in one drop? If I get this image right, will your spiritual bypassing stop? Why were you so in love with letting yourself go? It was actually your silence, you in your most quiet way of being, that made me feel like you might disappear. Would you shed off your form and forget the meaning of forever? Do I have to choose between your spirit or your skin? Do you intend to cosmically combust on me and fracture into fragments of self-sustaining energy? Is my eternity your golden moment in time? Okay, let me be a continuum of ultimate consciousness for you. I've got to be honest, since you love searching for those universal truths, I didn't know what continuum meant, so I looked it up. Uninterrupted existence. Is that not just another word for loneliness? Thank you.
So once I realized that I had this habit of dating Stardust boys, I finally decided to let them go last August in 2018. I actually wrote it down in my Luna diary, let go of the Stardust boys. And I wanted to find more ways to hold myself and trust in my own inner energy. And through this moment of self-discovery, I came across Elon Musk's top tips for productivity. And I don't know why it just spoke to me. And I don't remember all the tips, but the one that did stick was focus on the signal and not the noise. And I know he was referring to marketing strategies, but I thought that it, I could apply it to my own spiritual <laughs> practice. And during this time, I was also seeing all those, those you know, auspicious number sequences everywhere, 222, 333, 555, 88s, and I wanted to see them as symbols from the universe and trust in them. And so I threw myself back into the realm of numerology and tried to find out what, you know, the hidden meaning of these number sequences were. And I thought, what better place to start than in Melbourne CBD? So for instance, when you find that number 101, it's suggesting that the guardian angels are around you and you just got to follow your emotions and just trust and surrender because you never know positivity and harmony might just be around the corner. And I'm really realizing now that there are way more energies of love dissolving the energies of fear and this festival is testament to that here. And it's really lovely to know that Melbourne and the world is just getting more comfortable with words like spirituality and ascension and synchronicity and the fifth dimension. And as a girl growing up around Sufi mystic trance and sacred geometry, I feel less alone and way more terminologically free. And I do feel like there's a long-awaited awakening compassion coming through and you never know who might just drive up to you. So this next poem is called, Move the Way You Want and Find the Opportunities Around You. The space between 101 Collins and a beer garden on Flinders Lane may have brewed a reunion between a pair of twin flames. You told me you played the keys and used DJ decks to operate portals of energy. I expressed to you, I've let go and I've learned to live in a love-based reality. After two months of embodying a hungry ghost down at Melbourne Theatre Company, I felt ungrounded, got ghosted myself, and now I'm kissing the earth again, finally. I confess to you, I only made the switch last Thursday, actually, and I want to see the world through more art, beauty, magic, and poetry. An hour after, we shift from your SUV to the lounge of an electric lady where we seated ourselves in seats of deep truth. Tonight we focused on the signal and not the noise as we transited away from the tunes of Alice in Wonderland girls and Stardust boys. How could we rate a ride that was dissolving towards destiny as we disclosed our passion for crystals, nature and conscious intimacy? I had an urge to share with you my special secret seraphonite. It was met with the side of your hand holding on to a piece of hematite. I smiled as I tried to fish around for more hidden gems in my back pocket while you pulled out from underneath your t-shirt your favorite amethyst locket. With a semi-precious stone in both our palms, our guts spiraled in surprise as synchronicity steamed up our cores and recharged a new light in our eyes. Serendipity's winter stay in the city made it clear for us to see that we were always two bodies requesting to flow into the waves of one frequency how do you rate a ride that was dissolving into destiny? Five stars to Melbourne's unpredictable late night PTV. Five stars to High Priestess Past Lifetime Babe Anna Kennedy for saying, you do you, lady. Five stars to me for saying, I want to stay in my own energy. Five stars to you for answering yes to a request from me at 11.43. The universe and Uber have one thing in common with each other. If you're open to trusting their services, I guarantee they will deliver. Thank you. And this last poem is about that wonderful being that I met that winter's night. And this is an expression of his energy and what it does to me. I 
I hold up a malachite and I'm reminded of the little mollusk you bent down to pick up to place back into his rock pool home down at Point Road night. When we met, I told myself, what a blessing from the 808 Lionsgate portal, a reward for many moons of meditations and manifestations and shamanic activations, that you were going to be my initiation, a preparation towards something grander. And we were just spiritually awakened beings, light working down in St. Kilda for the day. And the universe planted you in my path in some way to eventually teach me detachment, a little love you and leave you lesson maybe. Hold on tightly, let go lightly, but then you take me. You take me through the path of least resistance. You release and rush into my ley lines like an elixir of liquid lightning, and you're gleaming now, gallant, cleanse clear quads transparent. It's arresting to see that solar storm kind of attention you have in your facial expressions when you finally believe in the beauty of your own energy, breaking through my skin to reveal your charge of thunderstorming within. I hear your power as you rediscover your strides into the shards of dawn with me. I become a blended bandwidth of blue, green, and gold as I breathe in the bass lines of our bioluminescent soul. I can smell a forest on us. Your movements are muscular, multi-tembral invitations into a smudging of earthy synth and astral ash. Your syncopations of spirit and silence pitch bends my body to ground. Your spirit and silence activates and anchors my awareness in this sudden space of sacred sound. Sometimes it's through your music where I hear you glisten with emotion pure and simple, like light hitting a crystal. And it's this innocence that I love listening to that makes me trust in all chords of you. This ecstasy doesn't want to be written to scale as you surround me now with your sonorous shale. Your melodies move me towards an underwater ascension. You hold me up in suspension towards quivers of black and shivers of silver. What's this orchestration? What's the true sheen of surrender? Is it colored by the act of diving deeper or rising higher to give in to the desire for air. Whenever we go down that great ocean road, your car tends to get fogged up by galactic dew and glinting critters, and it always seems to rain outside. I think it's so we can drive under the rib cages of rainbows and feel the stubble of the sun sinking within our diaphragms at the same time as a kyanite sky as she sings to us her most radiant open song. I mean, it was through the chords of synchronicity that we came to be, and you will always be the prism to an iridescent reality. I've always resisted luminosity, but here you were, beaming at me, like a top-grade polished pyrite-flecked lapis lazuli. I'm in love with your light because of how much you love to give your light away. I can't capture your resonance, nor would I try to portray this essence, something that I initially immediately wanted to run away from because I knew that it was made up of a song that felt closest to home, too deep to deny, too easeful to embrace, this place you may try to leave but always return to, in truth. Your light never lies to me. It only lies with. Thank you.